Amen. Let us pray. Father, I just want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for all that we have done. All is because of you. The thanksgiving, the, te the testimonies, and the birthdays, Lord, is to give glory to your name. Right now, with this few minutes we have for this word, I pray that you will speak and impact our life. Lord, please speak to us individually. Even me that you are using, speak to me too. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to title the first message of this year, Relationship with Christ. Relationship with Christ. Please tell the people in that house that they are disturbing us here. Those that are laughing there, please tell them, please, they are disturbing us. Okay? Praise the name of the Lord. Relationship with Christ. Amen? Our Bible reading is taken from John chapter 1. John chapter 1, 10 to 13. John chapter 1, 10 to 13. Amen? He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. And who is that? Is it me? Jesus. 11. He came to his own people, even they rejected him. But to all who believe in him, as many, King James says, as many as received him, to them he gave them what? Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. That means the disciples saw him, they believe in him. Now you can't even see him. You have heard his name. And his name has done a lot of miracle. And we have a lot of testimony with the name of Jesus has done. And he's going to still do more in the name of Jesus. Verse 13, they are reborn, not with physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Praise the Lord. Today we are talking about relationship with Christ. Brethren, if we look at where we are going, the trend of things in the world today, I believe every one of us will want to be like Paul the Apostle. This man was fearless. He said, because I see the terror and that is why I must go there and preach the gospel. Except you see the terror that is coming. Except you see the danger that is coming. If you don't see it, you will not tell people about Christ. And for you to tell them about the Lord Jesus, you need to have a special relationship with the one whom you want to talk about. Because you can't talk about someone you don't know. What is this? We, what do we mean by relationship? It is a connection or an association with somebody. For example, I and my wife, we have a relationship. And if you come before we got married, we wouldn't know ourselves. Before we got married, if she comes to my house, she doesn't know where I kept salt. He wouldn't know where I kept my, my uh, torch in kafa. He doesn't know where I kept mansaf. He doesn't know where I kept fish. I will keep my fish. I remember a particular day when she came to the house. Unfortunately for her, we are very good cook. People from our area, we are very, very good cook. We cook very well. And she saw food that I've cooked. And you know, what, 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 what do you think her reaction will be? As a woman, what do you think will be? Who cooked this food? Let me ask you, which woman entered your house to cook this food? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I, I, I'm the one that made mistake. I gave her to test. And she, when she tested the food, she knew that this food, wow. This is, you know what we call a dikaniko? Afang soup, when you cook it. When you eat it, that is why in our place, they said the women use food to capture their husband. When they cook, finish, you cannot go outside to eat. 
you will want to always eat your husband, your wife's food. So when she finished eating it, he said, who cooked this food? I explained, I gave every explanation, I said everything, I quote all the Bible passages, he was entering here and coming out from here. Praise the name of the Lord. Cannot hear anything. After we talked and we, I thought everything has died down, oh good, I was smiling, I scotted her, she went home, and we were talking, talking. The day we got married and we got home, listen to me carefully. And one day, we have lived as husband and wife one year, two years. One day, I came back from work. I branched the market. I said, I want to surprise my wife a little bit because, because I was running shifts. I came back from night duty. So let me prepare food. So when she comes back, she will eat. I prepared the same food. By the time she came back, I was still preparing the food and she was watching. When we finished, and she said, so you are the one that prepared that food that time. Praise the name of the Lord. Ha! That means that thing did not go out. It was still there. Be careful. Amen? So it was then. See, until she now have a relationship with me and know who her husband is. Before she starts, oh, if any girl come to the house, we'll forget about him. In those days, if you come to her house and somebody tells you, I saw your husband, say, he has sold himself to God. He, no matter what you do, he doesn't care anymore. But before you branch, who is that? Who is coming? What is he doing? Praise the name of the Lord. But where the relationship is dead, no matter what you do, he knows who her husband is, and you know who your wife is. And that is why when you have a special relationship with Jesus Christ, you will not be afraid of anything. So, brethren, this year, we are getting close to the end of the world. If you believe, if you like, you believe it. But let me tell you, whatever has been prophesied many years ago is coming to pass in our time. We are seeing it now. Paul said, I see the terror that is coming. And as such, I must preach the gospel. I must tell people, look, if all the miracles in this world happen, you gain everything. You are delivered. The witches and the wizards are destroyed. And you are walking free. If you don't have Jesus, you are wasting your time. And as such, before you leave here today, if you have not known Jesus, it is time for you to accept him. Praise the name of the Lord. Who are you relating with? Who is your friend? If you show me your friend, I will tell you who you are. If you know that the person you are moving with will not help you this year, disconnect. I disconnected from many friends. Unfortunately for me, or unfortunately for, for my friends, for people who call themselves my friends in those days, I, I don't talk too much and I don't keep friends. And that is why my father called me 24 hours. Anytime my friends come to him and said, is he in? He say who? Because we have, we have our family is large. Very large family. He said, are you talking of 24 hours? He's there in the house. Others can go out. They can go partying. They can go eating. They can go doing this. But I don't know what made me. I was always there. Sitting there. I don't know what I'm doing. Praise the name of the Lord. The only thing you see me doing outside is when I'm playing football. That's when I can leave church to go and play football in those days. Praise the name of the Lord. But God has delivered me now. Amen. Mm, God has delivered me. So brethren, having a relationship with Christ goes beyond accepting him as your personal Lord and Savior. Accepting him is a good thing. But you need to go far. Last week we heard about purification. Purify yourself. And immediately, Julie made a mistake oh, for the devil come. Immediately she finished ministering. What song did you sing? It's a fire. And the fire was ignited. From now on, as you begin to have a special relationship with Jesus, you will catch the fire from now in the name of Jesus. What are you passing through that you think there is no solution? What you need is Jesus. 
For us to be purified and catch the fire to keep us burning for Christ, we need to go back and find out where we made mistakes. So what happens when we have relationship with Jesus? What are the benefits? Why must I have relationship with him? Why must I disconnect from my friends who take me out, who tell me to do what I'm supposed to do? Look, we are in a society where they would tell, look, I, 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 the world is becoming, the world is becoming something else. Could you believe somebody would chat with you and say, hi. I say, hi. How did you know me? I'm a friend. I just come to this place and I want to know you. Okay, I'm a social and so person. I live here. Oh, I'm gay. Can we be friends? That is the extent of the wickedness in the world. No, the devil is preaching the gospel and we are sleeping. Hi, hi. How are you? Oh, I, I need a friend. What kind of friend? I am gay. You are a man. I want to dream. I have a girlfriend. I want to give her out. To have another girl. Me, man. Me, you. Wow! Break in the time for us to die. I see the terror. The kind of wickedness we see today has surpassed that of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if God can destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for the wickedness they had, it means we are the verge of being destroyed. But he said, if I found at least some righteous people he said, I will not destroy. But the only thing Jesus will do, he will say, okay, I will come, I will separate the goats from the sheep. Where do you belong? So when we have a relationship with Christ quickly, what do we do? What do we gain? You will be under the covering of the, of the blood of Jesus, which he started many years ago. If we realize the protection of God over us, as against the wickedness of the world, you will specifically decide to have a special relationship with this Jesus. In Psalm 91, Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2, quickly, Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall do what? Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He that has a relationship with Jesus, no matter what happens, let the wicked... Let them fire their arrow. Let them send their evil arrow. It will not touch you. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 54 from verse 16. He said the weapon they are using, I created them. He said, I know the intricacy of it. I know everything. So that is why he said in verse 17, no weapon form against you will prosper. Because before they release that weapon, I know how to quench it. I decree this moment. Whatever weapon the enemy has sent against you, the Lord will quench them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, you can ask him anything and he will do it. When you have a special relationship with Jesus, when you ask him for anything, he will do it. Amen? John chapter 15, 5 to 7. John 15, 5 to 7. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. 16 of verse 6. He said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are born. But he said, if you abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, he shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done. Do you hear that? That means if you have a relationship with Jesus, you ask him for anything, he will do it. Brethren, we have seen God do a lot of things in our life. Amen? Testimonies that, has, that is coming from people who have sent prayer requests and God doing it. I, I, I can never forget the testimony of somebody rising up from a wheelchair and walking. I can never forget the testimony of people like Sister Lida, who is leaving us. Today is our last service today. 
with us. She has been dedicated, committed Sunday school teacher, but she was not that. It's a great testimony and transformation. I know where she started from. Until the day she made up her mind and said, this Jesus, I want to follow him. And God started using her. Sing in the choir, teach on the school. You go from Philippine church, she will be here as well and teaching. And today, and she said, I have to go back home for good. And she's not going to sit down. She's going to be useful in the hands of God. That is the greatest test. Attaching yourself to God gives you the right to become a child of God. You can open your mouth and speak and it will come to pass. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Those of you who were here last week, you saw the message. I'm not the one that preached. But she preached. And the fire came down. It is not, it's, it's, it's not because of the pastor. It's because of the God you worship. I all the time I go back to listen to that. See, I, 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 these days, am I, not, am I not blessed to preach only once in a month? After this first Sunday, I rest. I listen to my children. I blessed. I, I receive iron sharpened iron. The things I thought I know, when they come to give it in a different way, I say, wow, I've never started. Sit down and hear the message of others. See, all of you sitting there, you have a message for or even me. The word that you will stand, these children have not spoken to us, I've gotten something in my brain. Forgiveness. They concluded it. I don't know how many of you will still go back home today and still harbor that little thing. Oh, in those days, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, make, I enjoy making trouble. I, no, no, no. I enjoy trouble. My wife knows it. I enjoy trouble so much. I don't know why I enjoy trouble. And when trouble comes, I will look for it. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will make the trouble. The trouble will last. I will, but you know what? I will be looking for somebody to come and tell you, hey, I'm sorry. But you won't go. You'll be waiting. I will make more trouble for her. Make things difficult for her to say I'm sorry. For where? This one is squeak. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I jam rock. I was looking for somebody who come and say, hey, please, honey, I'm sorry. No way. One day, I got angry. I said, there is something I will do. This woman, I will catch you. You don't know how to say sorry. He knows I don't, we don't drink alcohol. Some of you who are from the village, that local one that they do in the village, not the one that they have refined and they still, the local one. In my place, they call it Kai Kai. <laughs> they brought it. Somebody brought it. My sister, they got married. My cousin, they married her and they brought it. I, when I came back, I said, why did you collect it? You know, we don't drink this. Thing. He said, ah. I have to collect it, so I keep it. You just see, you can throw it away. The thing has been lying there. One day she got me angry. I did everything. I refused to eat food. The woman was sleeping and snoring. <laughs> when I came to the room thinking that maybe it is time, maybe she's thinking of how to come and uh, tell me sorry. No way, she was snoring and sleeping. Hey, I said, what can I do to this woman? Who, what can I do? I grabbed the bottle. When the devil wants to fight, I grabbed the bottle. By the time I started drinking it, won't, won't eat. she thought I was joking it was water. But the aroma woke her away from sleep. He jumped. Hey, my husband! Hey! Before she knows, <laughs> husband has turned to something else. What I'm telling you is not a joke. The thing turned my eyes. I'll be climbing staircase without staircase. <laughs> I will see door when there is no door. And I was moving up. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about, you woman? Hey? Stupidity came in. The spirit took over me. He called. He, he, I was vomiting. She was packing vomit. I said, hey, now, 
Say, honey, please, honey, please. Honey, please, don't do this. Oh, honey, please. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Spirit. When the Spirit of God controls you, it makes you to be calm. You see things. But when that Spirit captured me, I was seeing different things. That is the difference between the Holy Spirit and evil spirit. Brother, nothing is a spirit. A man was drunk one day, got drunk, and he got to somebody's house. He started touching another person's wife. He said it's his own wife. I'm telling you the truth. When that spirit comes in, it will make you, Brethren, what we need to keep us away is to have a special relationship with Jesus. And since the day I had a special relationship with Jesus, if you like, oh, mm -hmm. if you talk, oh, mm -hmm. it's me that will go number one. When I want to kneel down, he said, oh, don't kneel down, don't kneel down. Praise the name of the Lord. What entered into us? The power in the world. Jesus Christ makes the difference. When you have relationship with him, you ask him for anything, you call him, he will answer. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, your faith will be committed to his hand. When I mean faith, I mean F-A-T-E. F-A-T-E. That is, I'm talking about faith. Something that will unavoidably befall you. Something that will definitely happen. You cannot avoid it. Something that will happen, you cannot escape it. So your faith is in his hand. So the most important thing why you should have a relationship with Christ is the coming judgment. Because he will be the judge. He will be sitting on the tree. He won't come like a baby again to come and born. All of us celebrated Christmas, isn't it? We ate meat. We ate chicken. Put Christmas tree. It's still here. Christmas everywhere. Yeah, I was forced to put Christmas tree. I don't like it. I was forced to put. When you put Christmas tree this year, hey, we will put. But how many souls have we won? If the soul will come and see Christmas tree, and okay, let's put it. Hey, Merry Christmas. We capture that person. Mm. You know the meaning of Christmas? Brethren, it is not the food. Christmas is not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. So most of the time, when you celebrate this Christmas, don't forget about the owner of Christmas. Have a relationship with him. When you have a special relationship with him, he will give you all the celebration you want in life. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. He said, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, According to that, he had done whether it be good or bad. Whether you do good or you do bad, if you don't have a relationship with him now, how will it be? On that day, will you be able to face him? Brethren, the time for us to make up our minds. And so this song will be you. I got my mind made up. And I won't turn back because I won't to see my Jesus someday. someday. I, I got, got my, my mind made up, made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. So when you are doing that, a person like Bridget will say, goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure, so sick. I stay no longer with you. Oh, I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made, I made up my mind. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Are you making up your mind today? Jesus is calling you. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He said, come. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to touch your life. Oh, I have given my life to Jesus, but I went back. He still say you can come. Someone knocking at your door. Come and shout at the hour. He's been knocking for so long. Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, it's at your door. Bow your heads as we pray. Are you here this morning and you have, you said, I want to have a special relationship with this Jesus. I need him in my life. I want to change. I don't want this 2023 to be a year where I will fool around anymore. You said, I want to surrender to Jesus completely. I want to return to him. Yes, I want to reconcile with him. Can I see your hands up? I want to pray with you. Is there anyone here? God bless you, my sister dear. God bless you. I can see your hands there. Ushers, please give them card. Please keep lifting up those hands. Sekabado, zibrada. Yes, you said, I just Jesus, I want him back in my life. Father, thank you. Just stand on your feet wherever you are there. Stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. Stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still there and you want to join, it is time. Look, let me tell you the truth. When Jesus will come, there will be no time for you to say, oh, let me repent. No. The time is now. That's why the Bible said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The time is coming. The time of mercy is going to pass. For those of you standing, I want you to say this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I come back. Like the prodigal son, I come back home. Accept me, Lord. Forgive me my sins. Wash me from every sin or anything I've done. I accept you back into my life. Come into my heart. Dwell there. Make my heart your home. Satan, I reject you. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your children. You have heard those words. I plead for mercy. If there is anything they have lost, Father, I beg you, let there be restoration now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as they have taken this decision, they will never go back. Let there be a great difference in their life. In Jesus' name we pray.